Hello everybody, Alice of HD here, and welcome to a brand new series for you guys. Today we're going to be playing RimWorld and starting a new Let's Play series. Now for those of you who are out of the loop and have not checked out my update video, I recommend that you guys check that out as to answer why I've been gone for so long, etc, etc. We're not going to get into that in this video, instead we are going to start with a brand new game from Ludeon Studios. Now what is RimWorld? RimWorld is a colony simulator. More specifically, a space colony simulator. We're going to see how long we can survive on a hostile RimWorld planet. Uh, it's really challenging. I've gone ahead and already played a few games to warm up for this series. I don't want to be a complete noob when I play this game like I was when I was playing Hearts of Iron 4. There'll be more of those videos later, by the way. So let's go and get started. Now, if you guys are familiar with Dwarf Fortress or any other sort of, you know, colonial slash strategy management based game this game should be somewhat similar to you already uh, i've already played like I, as i said already two or three games and it's a lot of fun we can go ahead and start by selecting one of these scenarios crash landed rich explorer lost tribe um let's go with the classic rim world experience of three crash landed survivors landing on a rim world with very few supplies now we also have a choice between three AI storytellers. I won't get into it too much in this particular video as this is a let's play and not a tutorial, but we're going to be going with Randy Random, who is basically the most wild card of the storytellers, not storytellers, and thus the most difficult to work with. So if you guys have watched my videos before, you know I'm all about the challenge. So we'll be playing as Randy Random, or rather as, we will be choosing Randy Random as our narrator. And we'll be going with Intense as extreme is probably just a little bit too hard and rough is bordering on the easier side of course these other difficulties we're not even gonna get into it if you guys have seen my videos before you know that i like to play the hardest difficulties so really by even playing intense we're giving us a lot of slack here to make mistakes that being said we are also going to enable permadeath mode this is probably something that most of you are already familiar with if you've been watching my paradox interactive games it is similar and analogous to Iron Man mode in that I cannot save scum or reload when things go rough. So when I lose my guys inevitably and they start dying of malaria and we have to, you know, resort to cannibalism to feed my colony, uh, there's no going back. So let's go ahead and continue. Now, in terms of creating worlds, this is a lot like, say, Minecraft, where you can enter really anything that you want for a seed and it'll generate a world for you. But if you've gotten this far in my video, you will have noticed the title was Survival Island. So, something like that, like Survival Island or Islandy, you know, Islandic will suffice. It doesn't really matter what you put. We're going to go with glove coverage of 50%. Basically, this is how much it's going to render of the actual surface of the planet before we crash land. We don't really need to uh, load everything, so I've opted for 50%. Now, what is RimWorld? This game is still in early access. Uh, but I've, I, you know, I've honestly had a lot of fun with it so far. It's got a lot more features than most indie developer strategic games do. Um, again, if you guys have played Dwarf Fortress, it should be a bit similar to you. But I'm getting a lot of a Firefly vibe from it. And what I mean by that is if you guys have seen the TV show Firefly, it's kind of exploring a lot of aspects of both uh, the Wild West and outer space at the same time, which sounds really ridiculous until you check out the show for yourself to see what I'm talking about. This game is a spiritual successor, in my eyes, to both Dwarf Fortress and Firefly, so let's go ahead and get started. So, with our seed Icelandic, you'll see that we've covered 50% of the globe. We're going to try to find something that looks somewhat like an island, but there's also a tropical rainforest, because we want to be a little bit, we want to have a little challenge here, right? We do have different biomes to choose from, ranging from temperate forest, which is the easiest, to deserts, to sea ice and ice sheets, which are incredibly difficult actually just finished a uh, single player game on an ice sheet and uh, we ran into cannibalism pretty fast because there were no animals so let's go a little bit easier but nothing too challenging or rather nothing too easy I should say I do want some challenge here so let's play in the tropical rainforest right we're gonna we're gonna go on an island maybe like this one or this one well actually like this one it's got mountains on it and what's gonna be challenging about the tropical rainforest is that disease is going to be more or less ubiquitous it's going to be bringing our colony down and we're going to have to have a trained doctor and medical staff pretty much right from the get-go in order for us to survive here the good thing is that there is a lot of wildlife uh for food that we can hunt but the bad news is that this wildlife is incredibly aggressive we got like panthers uh elephants all sorts of 
fun stuff, so we'll have to be sure that we're prepared for that. Uh, in terms of where we're selecting the crash site to be, I guess we could elect, elect to do select random, but I do want to have a tropical rainforest island, and this island over here fits the bill. In terms of what these little topographical representations mean, they're just representing the terrain that we have on this island. And you don't really want a flat terrain, because there won't be any mountain to basically burrow into and defend. So I need to find... Okay, so here we go. This one's mountainous. We've got year-round growing period and a summer temperature of 94 degrees Fahrenheit. For my European friends, that's probably somewhere close to the, uh, the upper 20s, lower 30s Celsius. So it's, it's relatively warm. Let's go ahead and select this tile. This one's fun. So we're hit next, and we're going to see what types of settlers we get, right? So we can randomize this, and we can even make our own, but there's no fun in that. We're going to, you know, go with what we got here, even though these are probably pretty terrible colonists. What I mean by that is that our first colonist is not only a nudist, but he's a cannibal, so he likes to eat food that consists of human meat, which is uh, a bit sketchy. So we'll keep him. He's a space fanboy slash castaway 56 years old with asthma that'll be a pain in the ass because we'll have to be treating him uh pretty constantly throughout the game otherwise he might die well that'll be fun we've got alexi who is a herbalist which means that he's decent at farming but he sucks at pretty much everything else he's incapable of any intellectual pursuits which means he won't be able to research anything that'll be pretty crappy and he's night oil night owl which means he likes to be up at night the rest of this doesn't really matter. Very substandard colonist. Pretty pretty shit, honestly. Let's see where our third one is. Also a male by the name of Litsuka. That's Japanese. Who also has asthma, believe it or not. That'll be that'll be fun. Wow, so we've already gotten quite a bit of uh you know. Quite a bit of stuff going against us already. This is not gonna be a fun playthrough. You know, being in the tropical rainforest already presents a lot of challenges, including diseases, and our colonists, two out of three of them, are already asthmatic and thus disease-prone already. So this is going to be pretty terrible. But at least Litsuka is able to research, which is great. He does have a daughter, uh, Ryoko Maniz, but I don't see her. She's nowhere to be found. Maybe she'll crash land later on. And Decker, Robin Decker, is the father of Alexi, which makes sense. This guy's 56, this guy's 31. They both have stupid haircuts. But anyways, let's get into it. Uh, looks like we don't really have much in the way of shooting skills here. Of course, that's going to gauge how accurate these guys are at hunting and defending our colony. But they'll, they'll get better at it. You might see these little flames over here. This just represents how interested they are in a skill. One flame means that they gain... Intr or experience at 100% the normal rate. If you don't have a flame, I think it's like 30, yeah, it's 33%, so you don't, you want to avoid the skills that they suck at. But, let's see, okay, so, if you have a double flame, like Tetsuo over here, you do research at 1.5 times speed, so, really, our colonists kind of suck, but let's go ahead and get started. So here we go, we're gonna crash land on the planet, let's see how this turns out. Quite honestly, this is a random seed, and a random location. So we'll see if this is a decent spot. So crash landing onto the jungle. Here are our men. We do have a... Looks like a Pomeranian Husky. Or no, a Husky, I should say, with the name of Pom Pom. Very, very cool. You can actually uh, tame wildlife and have, like, animal husbandry, which means that you can kind of breed your animals. And uh, that'll be kind of interesting. Let's take a look at where we are in relation to this uh, particular island. So we do have a coast up here in the north, which will be interesting. I think later on, maybe like, you know, visitors might come from the sea. We might have some fish uh, and various things like that. So we're going to try to avoid colonizing this area just because there might be some danger settling close to the sea. Moving around the map, it looks pretty wide open. I don't see a lot of defensive spots. We do have one over here, which might be worth... Eh. I see it might be worth colonizing, but there's actually no soil in which to... Uh, create plants. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at where we crash landed. There's actually this little pocket over here, which is incredibly defensive. Well, this is quite fortuitous. We've just started on episode one, and we're already in a very, very good location to build our first base. Now, that being said, let's take a look at the soil here. So, if we go over here, if you look on the bottom left, we are in a current area that has rich soil, which is good, which means we can farm with ease. 
But that being said, there is kind of a choke point right here that I don't really feel like defending. Because if we pull up our architecture tab over here and make a defensive wall, you'll see that we have to stretch a little bit thin. And once enemies come knocking on our door, it's too much of a space to defend. So let's go and cancel all that. If there was a way if I could just do it like that. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm either going to decide to settle up here in the north or settle over here in the west. Which is like this little defensive pocket over here. This is actually probably going to be the most ideal spot for us to settle at first. Just because there is a very small, I guess, valley defense already in place, a natural defense. Of course, these undiscovered brown spots here are parts of the mountain. And generally, enemies don't approach the mountain unless if they're, you know, insectoids. So for the most part, we'll be, we'll be safe if we settle over here in the west. We do have some decent soil here, fertil fertility of 100% and 70. That'll be fine. So let's go ahead and immediately pop up our architecture tab here and work on making some defenses because having a narrator like Randy Random, we're going to get challenges thrown at us almost immediately. So it's important that we prepare for that. So we're going to go and start by making a wall. Mm. If I made it six, it would be asymmetrical in terms of where the door would be placed. So let's go ahead and immediately place one right here. Nice little wall with a steel door. Now, I won't get into too much of how to play this game in this particular episode. If you guys are interested in learning how to play this game, I will be putting a tutorial up sometime later this week on how to play RimWorld. So this is going to be basically more or less, I assume you know how to play, or you can just kind of follow along with what I'm doing currently. So we got these three guys. We've currently timed, or rather paused, this particular uh, game. Of course, if we unpause, you'll see that we're kind of wandering around. It's because we haven't unforbidden our items yet and assigned work orders. So what we're going to do is we're going to immediately unforbid all of these items here. And what that means is that from the very beginning of any game that you play in RimWorlds, the items that you crash landed with are forbidden, which means that your colonists will not be able to use them until you unforbid them. This is basically just an order that says not to use these items. We actually start off with 30 packaged meals, which should last us a few days few days to let us get some art agricultural and uh, farming up and running. So that being said, right after this, we need to go and check to see which one of our colonists has the best shooting skill, which is right up here. Why I'm looking at this is because we do have three weapons from the very start of the game. You start off with a survival rifle, a plus steel knife, and a pistol. So naturally, whichever character has the highest shooting skill will get the best weapon, which in this case is the survival rifle. So we're going to prioritize Litsuka for picking up that survivor rifle. Prioritize Decker and getting the pistol. And Alexi, who's just bad at everything, he'll be getting the plasteel knife. So let's go and unpause. They're going to pick up those items. And take a look at this. Litsuki actually has a pretty weird looking mohawk. That's always pretty cool. Let's see who Pom Pom belongs to. So Pom Pom belongs to Robin Decker, which means that Pom Pom should follow Decker. Unless if he hasn't been trained yet. He has not been trained yet. So we're going to go ahead and put a work order in to train him. Give him some obedience training there. But with that being said, let's take a look at the surrounding animal life we have here. We have some alpacas, some cassowaries, even some chinchillas. So this is decently interesting. It'll be kind of fun to see how we work around with that. I don't see any really hostile life forms yet. Of course, looking around the map here, maybe we might find something a little bit more dangerous. Like an elephant, a bear... Or really anything else. No. Oh, yeah, we see a panther. So we're going to try to avoid those panthers for the time being. We don't want to get one of our colonists. You know, we don't have... We don't want any ligaments to be ripped off just yet. We'll have to wait until we starve before we deal with things like that. So anyways, now that we're set up, we know where we want to be. And we're going to go ahead and set up manual priorities over here. The work orders. What are manual priorities? This is basically a task to see which priorities we set to our, our workers. So... A priority of one, for example, would uh, come before any of the other priorities on a left to right basis, where a priority of nothing or five, or rather four, I'm sorry, would be the lowest. So that being said, anything with a white box around it, these guys are going to be pretty good at it. So we'll assign Letsuke and Decker as handlers. Who's better at it, though? Letsuke by quite a bit. And what a handler is, is just animal skills. So will be able to tame animals, not hunt them. That'll be more related towards uh, weapon skills. So we'll make a uh, Litsuki handle the animals. Cooking. Pretty much all my colonists suck at cooking. 
you know, not to be sexist, but we don't have a woman yet. We only have three male colonists. So not only will we not have, you know, married couples or anything like that, but we also won't, you know, have stereotypical gender roles because this is 21st century and men will have to cook. So that being said, Decker, the castaway, will be our cooker. In terms of hunting, we're going to send that to Litsuki as well. He's got the best out of a very meager skill set here. Construction will assign to Decker. Growing, they're all pretty decent at it. But Alexi the Herbalist comes out on top. Of course, the rest of these guys will assign it as a third priority because growing is important. If we don't have crops, we will die of starvation. In terms of mining, they're all pretty bad at it. We'll assign a two for pretty much all of them except for Alexei, who will get a three. Basically, if there needs to be anything cut down, they'll all do it at a fairly standard rate. Plant cutting, we'll do a two for each one. One for Alexei. Actually, we'll make these guys four. The herbalist should be cutting the plants, let's be honest here. The rest of this doesn't really matter. We're not going to get into tailoring, herbalism, or anything like that today. So, crafting. Hulling is the most important. We're going to put hulling as a one. Everybody's in the hull. And Lutsuki Levy, I'm researching. So now that, that boring stuff is out of the way, let's go ahead and unpause the game. And set up some areas over here where our future colony is going to be constructed. So, we do need a dumping ground, stockpile ground if you will, for goods that are going to be important. We'll make it right here, temporarily speaking. And a dumping ground for those things that are less important, like animal corpses and things that we don't really care about, which we'll put right over here. So you already see that Decker is working on constructing our walls, which are going to be our defenses, which is fantastic. Alexei moving some wood over to our stockpile zone, which is good. Um, getting into this, we're going to have to basically cut out into the mountain here to give ourselves some space. As you guys can see, we don't really have that much space to work with here with this particular colony. So we'll put in a work order for mining out some of this mountain here. And we've got Alexi moving some steel back into the stockpile section. I will say that most of the construction materials in this game are going to come from steel, which in this case has come from our crashed ship. And also wood and other various resources that we can get from cutting down trees. Now, we are in the jungle biome, so that being said, there's going to be a lot of different trees to potentially cut down, which is a very, very good thing. And um, so far, so good. So we've already set up our first wall here, which means that any invaders that need to get into our base are going to have to break through over here. And let's go ahead and set up a second defensive line, because again, we don't really know how risky it's going to be with um, our narrator, narrator being Randy Random, because he can basically throw anything at us. It might be really, really unfortunate. It might be, you know, pretty terrible. So let's go ahead and focus on getting these mined out. And then we'll work on getting our farm set up after we set up our defensive line, because our defensive line is going to be the most important thing. When you start off any game in Rim Worlds, really, it's super, super important to get that defensive line started up. Let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit here. Fast forward, if you will. Now, they're all pretty bad at, at mining. Of course, they've gone ahead and just skipped it all together. Litsuka, you'll be the guy who cuts this all down. Good stuff. It's already mostly done. I don't know why they stopped doing it in the first place, but here we go. We'll set the second defensive line right over here. Pretty decent. Three going both ways. That's great. And we'll set up some sandbags for defense for the moment. Of course, later on, we can get turrets and all of that sorts of great stuff. But for now... It's not too much of a tower defense game, mainly just a basic defense. So that being said, they'll go ahead and work on that. We put in a work order for it. And of course, for the moment, they're just moving stuff into our area over here. We are going to want to eventually make a Walden warehouse, because these goods are going to deteriorate if left out in the open. As you guys can see, these are deteriorating due to being unroofed. That is to say that they are exposed to the elements. So we'll be working on that momentarily. But first, let's go ahead and set up our first farming zone, which is going to be just north of our storage depot. We'll set it up over here. We'll make it a 8x8. Well, that actually looks pretty ugly. Let's make it somewhat um, matching up with our walls over here on the right. So this is going to be our first growing zone. We'll make it, let's see, some rice plants. Rice plants are going to be the fastest growing. But they're also the least nutritionally viable. But it doesn't really matter. We just need to get ourselves started up here. So that being said, we do have a stockpile zone, a growing zone. We don't have 
anywhere for our colonists to sleep yet. Which is alright. We don't really need to right away. Um, and anyways, I'd like to dig into this mountain a little bit anyways to set up our base over here. So, that being said, we're just going to let our men go ahead and set up their constructions and move all of our resources into place. Of course, we're using most of our construction already to set up our defenses. Combat in this game... Um, once we get around to it, I'll show you guys how it works. But basically, we're going to be setting up our men behind this barricade and taking pod shots as the enemy moves through our kill zone, which will be the steel door. We'll keep it as always held open, so that way, um, when the enemies do come, they don't break down the door each time they do it. Of course, Alexi's going to go ahead and already work on the growing zone over here, which is fantastic news. Now, that being said, I do want them to prioritize mining a little bit. I know that they do have some packaged food and lumber that they need to take back to our base. Luckily, we crashed really close to where we're going to be building in the first place, so that's good news. And take the last of the food. Good. Looks like we do have a panther, but he hasn't turned on our colonists yet, which is a good thing. So that being said, our guys are going to start working on mining out where our buildings are going to be, which is a very good thing. Actually, that being said, let's go ahead and move our stockpile zone up to the north up here, just just temporarily. Of course, we'll move it later on. We'll go ahead and copy the settings over here and paste them over here and get rid of this, because this is actually where we're going to build our first little uh, building. And by our first building, it's, something, it's not going to be anything special. We'll go ahead and work with wood, as that'll be the most abundant resource that we have access to right away. So 4x4, four four, pretty basic. It's just going to be a really quick building that we set out over here which we've gone ahead and already laid down the foundation for of course where we're going to put the door is a matter of contention because it's not exactly symmetrical so what we'll go ahead and do is we'll extend the growing zone because i'm a little bit autistic in terms of symmetry there we go so actually decky we're going to want you to go ahead and cancel these and deconstruct the one that you have placed because i want this to be symmetrical right this is this is something that's going to be important later on and why am I so freaked out at it being symmetrical? Well, because I want them to have a door that's in the very, very middle. In this case, made out of wood. So, Decky will go ahead and work on that. Or Decker, I should say. Work on building the first foundation of our base. Of course, slow progress. It's already 10 p.m. at night, and our men don't have a bed to sleep on. So, we're going to work on that. By setting up a bed tomorrow. Tomorrow, the in-game day. Of course, our colonists have different needs. That being said, um, they're not going to like living out, you know, sleeping out in the open, um, slept on the ground, for example, ate without a table. These are things that we have to take into account. They're already, of course, hungry as well. So we're skipping ahead here. And hopefully we can work on more of this base once our men wake up here. So far, so good. We haven't had any difficulties in terms of any raids. As the game progresses and as our colony gets more and more wealthy, in terms of crops and uh, industrial output, we can expect more and more enemy raids to take place on our soil. And these are gonna be difficult because we don't really have a, a you know, a, a hospital bed set up yet, which means that if we get injured, we're probably gonna end up dying, which is always very fun. So we need to go and work on setting up our first little house here. Of course, we do have an eclipse, which means that if we had any solar power, which we don't, we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, it would have been disrupted because it's an eclipse, which means it's basically night during the daytime. Which is actually disastrous once we start having um, things like electricity and solar power. Of course, having an actual eclipse gets rid of your solar power. Our men are creating a roof over our farm, which is not going to fly. So let's go ahead and clear no roof. Or expand no roof in this area. This is our farm. If we have any roofs, the sunlight will not be able to pierce through. The only place I want roofs to be, really, are going to be over here. Um, yeah, so so far so good, that's fine. They'll build roofs everywhere else, which is alright for the moment. That'll keep the sun out, or sorry, not the sun, but the, uh, the elements out of our base, of course. This will also allow our survival package meals to uh, not deteriorate so fast. So later on, we can, we can fix that up. But anyways, we need to focus on getting our base set up. Let's go ahead and focus on you guys mining the granite over here. And let's go ahead and set up our first bed, right? Now, we don't have males and females, and thus no couples. There are actually gay 
um, characters, but none of our none of our guys are gay. Let's just double check on that. Traits. This guy's a nudist, which means that he is uncomfortable with his clothes on. So we'll go ahead and remove his clothes. We don't want him to be uncomfortable. He is happily nude, which is going to give him a huge mood buff. Um, in this game, when your men or women or any colonist really gets below a certain mood threshold, they can have a psychotic breakdown to disastrous effects. So we want to make sure that we manage the happiness as well as the food intake of our colonists. So that's important. He's nude now, which is a good thing. Let's see if any of these other guys are gay. The reason why I'm asking that is not because I'm homophobic, but because if they are gay and if they do get into a relationship, we can make a double bed for them to sleep on. But of course, if they are not gay, we don't want to force them to sleep in the same bed. That'll make them unhappy. So for now, we'll go ahead and make three wooden beds. It's pretty crappy. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't want to be... I wouldn't want to be in a situation with beds like this. This is basically like a little uh, barracks over here. Let's go ahead and face those beds in the correct direction, that is. But again, we'll, we'll upgrade our base as we get along into it. So we're clearing this out. That's the best news we've got so far. Of course, skipping ahead here. Now that that's being taken care of, let's go ahead and cancel these over here. Let's have you work on mining this out as well. Just so we make this room a little bit decently symmetrical. It doesn't have to be incredibly symmetrical, but the more symmetrical, the better. Our colonists do have preferences in terms of interior design. So because there's rubble here, we're going to want to haul those out of the base. Otherwise, we will get a penalty to mood. Again, our colonists are going to be a bit picky here. That being said, let's go ahead and work on making some floors. We'll go ahead and start with the wooden floor, as we have plenty of wood. Kind of give our colonists something to have on the ground so they're happy and that they're, you know, our base isn't so ugly. But anyways, I know this episode wasn't too exciting. Again, this is just the first two days of our colony. This will get a lot more intense as we progress in terms of what to expect with enemies and uh, the elements, because we are on a survival island. There are lots of uh, diseases flying around that we need to be cognizant of. I don't want our guys to die of malaria. It's probably going to be happening. But because we do have a bed, I believe they're a little bit happier. So let's see. New colony optimism. That's good. He's nude, which is great. And they're not upset that they're sleeping on the ground anymore, but they do live in an awful barrack. <laughs> My barrack is an awful place. We'll fix that eventually. Of course, before we end this episode, I do want to make a fourth bed over here. Because we will get more colonists. Now, because we do have three men, there won't be any babies, of course. But eventually we might get some visitors. We might even be able to take some prisoners. This game is incredibly complex. I don't want you guys to think that this is like going to be like Farmville. It's not at all. Um, there's cannibalism in this game. There's diseases. You know, of course, there's weapons and hunting and PvP. But really... I want you guys to think of this game as something completely new for this channel. It's not going to be like European Rosales. It is a very strategically um, minded game, however, so I don't want to completely discount that. And our colonists do have needs to um, basically fulfill their joy quota. So if we have them overworked, they're not going to be too happy. We can actually go ahead and assign what times they work, but we're not going to get into that in this episode. It's a little bit too micromanaging for my preferences. So that being said, thank you guys for watching the first episode. We've gone ahead and set up a great spot here on our survival island. We do have a little kill zone already established. We can put our guys over here. And just to show you guys what that is, like if we set them to draft mode, you'll see that uh, Decker over here already has his gun out. He's going to be watching for targets. Because we have a kill zone over here that'll force enemies to funnel through in here. And hopefully, with any luck, they'll get shot to pieces. This also includes animals. Sometimes animals go berserk and we'll attack our settlement. More on that later. But thank you guys for watching the first episode. Um, and stay tuned for episode two, where we get into a little bit more depth without, you know, stretching our base over here. And working on just getting settled here, because this is going to be a very difficult Let's Play series. I know it doesn't seem like it so far, just because we haven't ran into any threats yet. But I'm also trying to be OCD about how big this particular room is. I want to make sure that it's somewhat symmetrical here. Give them a work order for when they get around to it. But getting guys, thank you so much for watching the first episode. We're about the 30-minute mark. i got to keep my videos uh, south of the 30-minute mark just so I can upload them in time. 
But anyways, thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.